Hey guys, this is Vicki Ranchetti with Show Dog Prep School and the Confirmation Conversation. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about choosing the dog that's going to be your show dog. I was talking to a friend who's also a professional dog trainer, and we talked about how we both in our in our local dog training, you know, basic dog training um, businesses. We offered, and for me, I offered for free, a course on, we're actually just a consult on choosing the right breed for you. Because so many times people will see a dog and say, wow, that's the per I love how that dog looks. That's the perfect size. Like this is going to be great. But they didn't really look into the temperament of the dog and just the the needs of a, of a particular breed. And so people can end up being disappointed. So we were talking about that in terms of show dogs too. And it's interesting because when we think about show dogs, we think about people know what they want. Like we have this breed, but honestly, there's a lot of people that are not decided on what breed they're going to get, or they're tinkering between a couple of different breeds. So there's a lot to think about when you decide you want to get into dogs. Now, some people like in my mentor program, for instance, you know, they they actually got into showing because they want to be breeders. So they want to breed dogs, but they want to be good breeders. So they want to get quality animals and they want to show them and learn about this sport and learn about the whole process is the whole thing. So somebody like that um, is probably not going to be wanting to talk about different dog breeds. For them, we're going to be talking about the individual dog they get, like, who's the breeder going to be? What's this dog going to be? You know, and, and then, and then nail it down that way. But if you're not decided, then there's, there are some things that you can consider to make getting into the show ring easier. Now, if you have your heart set on a breed and, and you've researched it and you're sure, and you're like, this is what I want. This is what I've always wanted. This is what I'm going to have. Then by all means, then you're going to get your dog. Then it's just about choosing the right breeder and the right individual dog, right? For moving forward with what you want to do. But if you're not decided, there's some things that uh, you can think about. So if what you want to do is confirmation. Like you're like, I love this sport is so fun. Like this looks like what I want to do. I want to do show dogs. Then you, in a way, you know, people talk about, you know, you kind of got to pay your dues. And, and I do think that that's true to some extent. In other words, people are just not going to sell a stranger the best thing they have. Um, and in some breeds, people can be quite um, protective and uh, resource guardy, if you will, of their breeds. And they're just, they want to make sure that someone who's going to be getting a dog from them or getting into the breed is, is really in it for the long haul and, and really is going to do right by the breed. So there's those things to consider. So when you're thinking about the breed, there are some things that you can look at if you're interested in like getting a dog that you're going to be able to go in the ring, show yourself, groom yourself, present yourself and, and win sometimes. Um, if you have a good dog, you're going to win sometimes. I mean, people will talk about, oh, it's so political and the handlers always get it. Well, the truth is usually the handlers get good dogs. I mean, people don't do generally, I mean, I guess some people do, but when people are going to put a dog with a handler and pay that kind of money, they're going to give them a good dog. They're not looking to just, you know, I mean, their dog, their good dog might not be as good as the next guy's good dog, but they're still assuming it's a good dog. So handlers, especially really, really good handlers, really well-known handlers, they have their pick. I mean, they can pick and choose whatever they want, and they're going to be offered really good dogs to show. So I'm always like, uh, it's not really that it's always political, but they, they may probably groom the dog better and present the dog better. And they just have quality animals. If somebody sees a handler year after year after year, a judge, and that person always has good dogs, they're automatically going to get a look when they walk in there. And it's not because anybody's being shady. It's because they know that they bring them good dogs. They know that this handler always has something nice to look at. So there's a few things you can look at though. One of the things you can look at is, you know, breeds that have less numbers. So just not as many dogs because 
uh, for instance, um, if you're in California and you want to show a golden retriever, you're going to have a lot of competition and it's going to be a lot of pro handler competition. And those dogs are um, going to have, you know, like perfect grooming. They're going to, it's, everything's going to be on point. So that means that not only do you need to have a really good dog, so you need to have a really competitive dog. You need to be really like at least skilled enough to present that dog so the judge can see what you have. You need to be able to do the grooming. So that's a big consideration too, is the grooming. So I once had someone come to me, it was another trainer and said, I want to get a show dog. I want to show dogs. So they were looking at either a standard poodle or a Portuguese water dog. And I was like, do not get a standard poodle. <laughs> I mean, for one thing, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but not only that, to learn really to be a good poodle groomer is on a whole nother level. It's, it's not even, it's not just like washing the dog and blowing the dog. It's everything. It's the trimming and the spraying up and the breaking down and the keeping in coat and the weekly baths. It's all this stuff. So if I know in my area, we have some of the best, best professional handlers on poodles, meaning that they're, you can't touch their grooming. Um, then I'm going to be like, it's going to be hard to do well with a poodle, um, you know, especially as your first show dog. And then you've got to find somebody to sell you a really good one. So you've got handlers who have people who breed really good dogs, give it, or, you know, putting really good dogs out there with them for them to handle and present. And plus they know how to do all the grooming. Plus they know how to present the dog. Plus they know to, how to enhance really great things about the dog and downplay things they don't like. So, you know, I think um, starting out, if you if you are open to it, a breed that doesn't require as much, at least technical grooming. So by that, I mean, and this isn't to say that you can't learn to hand strip or you can't learn to scissor. It just means that that takes a big chunk of your resources that you're putting into this animal, right? Because if if you have, I'm just going to throw breeds out here because short hair, you know, if you have a Vishla, let's say, the whole grooming piece is gone. I mean, that's just not an issue. I have, you know, smooth dachshunds, long hairs, wires. It's like the smooth literally gets can get wiped down with a rag and that's it. That is huge. As opposed to my Lauchen, where I don't even really want to have more than one in show coat because I have to brush them every day. I have to bathe them every week. There's all these things. So the grooming is a big thing you want to think about. So it isn't just how good the dog is. It's how good you can groom this dog. Another thing, again, is how competitive the breed is. So I talked about Golden just because that's a big number breed here, but it's also a breed that has a lot of professional handlers. So you can have some breeds that there's just a lot of owner handlers in the breed. And I think that that can be make things less intimidating for people because people, even though most professional handlers, not all, but most, especially the very, very, very successful ones um, are very, very kind and helpful to new people. So you'll see that, um, you know, it, they'll, they'll be helpful and they'll be nice, but they still might have a competitive edge. So, and it still makes people nervous because they're like, oh my gosh, there's all these handlers. I'll never win. And we're going to talk about that one day that how mindset is just such a big part of it. So you really want to think about how competitive the breed is, how many owner handlers or professional handlers in the breed, what are the grooming requirements? And so as you're deciding what dog you're going to get, you know, set yourself up to get one that it, you know, where you can have some success in the ring. Probably. Um, it's very, very common for people wanting to get into showing dogs or getting into a breed to, you know, want to go out and get like a fabulous female. And it's like, depending, especially on the breed and the size. So right. Big dogs have bigger litters. Small dogs have smaller litters. I have Lao Chen. We have like usually three or four maybe puppies in a litter. I had a five puppy litter this year and that was like huge. So if you're looking at a litter of three puppies, then there might not even be a bitch. I mean, and then if there is one or two, it's probably not going to be 
as easy to get one, right? So sometimes people are like, I'll sell you a nice boy. Um, and maybe they all want to have their name on it. Or maybe they all want to use it for breeding. I mean, these are all other things that you have to consider. But sometimes you can get in faster if you're open to having a male because people are just breeders are, are sometimes more willing to part with boys. A lot of breeders don't want to keep a bunch of males. Um, and males are fabulous. I mean, I, I adore boy dogs. And a lot of people adore boy dogs, but a lot of people, you know, steer clear of them because it's like, oh my gosh, I'll have dog fights. And oh my gosh, he'll pee all over the house. Well, you can train him not to pee. You can use a belly band. I mean, you know, it can be, um, a, a, you know, a positive experience to get a male dog because it's easier to get one sometimes. And it's, you don't have to worry about, you know, coming into season and the coat going crazy and all this. I mean, boy dogs have their other own issues. Don't get me wrong, but it ain't going to be coming into season. That's for sure. Actually, with boy dogs, it gets most complicated when you have bitches in the house that are intact because then they come in season and that's when the boys go nuts. But just, you know, you really want to think about the breed, how it is to live with it, right? Is this an animal? And especially if you want to get into this breed, do you want to have a bunch of them running around your house? You know, is it the right fit? And then Again, considering the region that you live in and, and who's competitive there. Is there a lot or not very many of this breed there? Is there a lot of owner handlers? How much grooming is involved? How difficult is it to live with this kind of dog? Those kinds of things. So I hope this gives you some insight into, you know, choosing um, the right show dog for you. And even maybe if you're thinking about venturing into another breed, um, you know, which can be fun, you really can play around with it and just like look at a lot of breeds and read up on them and meet them and get some ideas of, of, you know, what it would be like to live with and show that breed. So I hope this helps you. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and check us out on Facebook, Show Dog Prep School.